Ever since Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones started launching, we've been hearing a lot of reports of heating and throttling. Now, in my personal experience, while it is true that the 8 Gen 1 does generate more heat than its predecessor, it is nowhere close to being as bad as it's being made, to, made out to seem. So when I got my hands on one of the best cooled 8 Gen 1 phones, I kind of got curious. Can the 8 Gen 1 be tamed to achieve acceptable levels of sustained performance? Which, of course, leads to the follow-up question, what is an acceptable level of sustained performance? Well, uh, here is what I decided to do. Take the best performance-based phone with last-gen flagship internals, which undoubtedly is the ROG Phone 5S, because, you know, Asus has a long history of providing the best cooling solutions for the ROG phones. So take that as a benchmark and compare it with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phone that has the best cooling solution as of today, the Red Magic 7. So how we're gonna accomplish this is by running a compound benchmark repeatedly and seeing if the 8 Gen 1 drops more performance than the 888 Plus with every run. At the end of the hour, is there a chance that the performance difference between both chips are negligible? Well, let's find out. Now my compound benchmark of choice here is Antutu. It stresses on four aspects of the phone, the CPU, the GPU, memory, and user experience. So today, let's not concern ourselves with memory or UX and focus just on the CPU and GPU numbers. At the end of round one, note that both are on their respective performance modes and we are seeing scores close to 800K on the ROG with over a million on the Red Magic 7. But that is not what we are concerned with. Like I said, what we are going to focus on is the CPU and GPU numbers. So here we are dealing with 33% better CPU performance on the Red Magic 7 and 40% with regards to GPU. So that is to begin with. So let's go ahead, soldier on and see how this trend continues. Now at the end of round two, the performances have dropped on both phones. That is something we expected. But active cooling does seem to make a world of difference. The ROG on it, the CPU performance has dropped by 5%, GPU 1%. Comparatively, on the Red Magic 7, it's just 1 and 0.5% difference here. This means the overall performance difference between Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 on the Red Magic 7 and the ROG Phone 5S, it remains almost the same with GPU, but it's much wider now on the CPU, and this is just two rounds in, so it's getting quite interesting. With round 3, the ROG actually gains a little ground with the CPU. Not uncommon with multiple runs of tests like this. But the overall trend is kind of set by this point. Both phones are keeping the losses to low single percentages, which is excellent. This means even after intensive use, I'd say playing a game for 30 minutes or so, you will still be seeing the same performance on either phone as you did when you started. Now with round 4, we see more of the same. This time the Red Magic 7 gets some CPU performance back to make sure the performance delta between both chips it is relatively constant. With round 5, we are at about the 50 minute mark. The overall performance has dropped by just 6% on the ROG and less than 3% on the Red Magic 7. This means even almost an hour in, both phones still run very similarly to how they did when we started. The fact that Asus have managed to do this without any active cooling is super impressive. But more importantly, this also shows us how the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, as long as there is proper cooling, it can actually sustain peak performance without issues. In contrast, the last time we did a similar test on a phone with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the OnePlus 10 Pro, it lost 15% of its performance between round 1 and 5. 8.5% with GPU, more importantly, a whopping 26.4% with CPU. So, cooling, very important with the 8 Gen 1. Now, before we wrap up, since you guys wanted to see it, I also ran a CPU throttle test for 15 minutes, at the end of which the CPU had throttled to 82% of its peak performance on the ROG, compared to just 91% on the Red Magic 7. Basically, what this shows us is that reports of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 being an untamable beast are very overrated. It all comes down to how you actually cool it. Yes, the Red Magic 7 has active cooling here, and that's not realistically an option that every brand can go for on their flagship phones, especially for a multitude of reasons. But that is not the point of this video. 
The question we set out to answer was can the HN1 be cooled in a way that it can continue to sustain performance for a long time? And at the end of the hour or so, will the HN1 perform any differently compared to say the 888 or the 888 plus? And the answer based on the facts that we've seen today is yes on both counts. Yes, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 can sustain close to peak performance for a long period. And yes, even an hour or so in, it still does, it still can do 30% better with CPU and 40% better with GPU compared to the last generation. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for today. I was kind of very curious to see how this one panned out. And I think our findings have been quite interesting. What do you think? Would you want to see more such deep dive videos? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we are at the end of today's video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4ETech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.